Good evening, everybody. My name's Neil Thomas. Welcome to Dudley College of Technology and our Parent and Carer Induction Talks this evening. Thank you ever so much for taking the time to join us on what is a lovely sunny day. Um, we're going to try our best to give you some information about what to expect from Dudley College, both from a parent perspective and from your son or daughter's perspective. Um, I'd like to introduce a couple of colleagues who are here joining me today. We've got Diana Martin, who's our Vice Principal, and also Sonia Wallace, who's our Head of Learning for 16 to 18 programmes. We're going to do our best today to try and share as much information as we can and answer some of your questions about what to expect from life at Dudley College of Technology. I'm going to start by um, giving a bit of a presentation, which Diana's going to also join me in, which I hope will answer a lot of your questions. But then we're going to open it up to questions after that for anything you think we haven't covered. If you want to ask questions or if a question pops into your mind as you're listening to the presentation, please do type them into the question and answer section on your team's page in front of you. And they'll come through live to us, hopefully, in the studio here for us to do our best to answer them. If we don't get to every single question, apologies for that, but I will talk at the end about how you can find out a little bit more after this event. Right, so I'm going to start then with the presentation, which I'm hoping you can see on the screen now. Um, first of all, a little bit about the college. Um, I'm hoping you've had a chance perhaps to get to one of our open days, um, maybe have a look at some of our facilities. We're really proud of what we call our learning quarters across both Dudley and Bridey Hill. Um, it's important to know that Dudley College is a big college. We serve about 13,000 students actually a year here at the college and young people and adults and so on. But actually each, it's made up of a series of small communities. So depending on what subject area your son or daughter or young person is studying, they might be in one of our buildings in Dudley, such as the ones you can see on the screen now. Maybe they're in Evolve studying arts. Maybe they're doing A-levels over at Dudley 6. Maybe they're in Dudley Advanced doing engineering. Or perhaps they're in one of the buildings over at our Bridey Hill Learning Quarter, including the construction uh, training centre or perhaps some of our digital um, provision over in Bridey Hill. Wherever they are, they'll be part of a small community that's just linked to their particular subject area. And whilst they get the benefit of using all of the other facilities, it does mean that hopefully they have a nice group, a nice small community of staff to work with. That doesn't mean they can't use all the other buildings, and that's one of the benefits of being a larger, wider college, that you can use any of the facilities across either of those sites, including access to the new higher education park that we're developing just down the road, which will give some of our students the opportunity to carry on to higher education after they finish with us at, uh, at college level. So hopefully um, you've had a chance to see some of those facilities and have a look around them. We're very proud of them. Um, I think you've made a great choice by considering Dudley College. I would say that, wouldn't I, as, as principal? But just a few reasons why I think that's a great choice. And then I'll ask Diana to give you a bit more information about what to expect uh, from uh, time here at Dudley. We are really proud of what we do here. We are an Ofsted outstanding provider. We're also one of the only colleges in the country to win the Queen's Anniversary Prize for Education. Um, normally they get um, snapped up by universities, so we're really proud to be one of the only colleges who've done that. The picture on the screen there is actually some of our students and staff collecting that from Buckingham Palace just before the lockdown. It seems like a long time ago now. Um, but actually that's not why we do this. Why we do this actually and why all of us get a kick out of the job we do here at the college is about changing the lives and supporting people to go on into whatever it is they want to do with us. We're very conscious that people don't come to Dudley College for the fun of coming to college, although we do hope it is fun. Uh, they're coming here because of what they want to do next, to go on to university, to go into employment, to whatever career it might be. And we do a really good, good job of that here. And I'm very happy to say that most of our students who leave us, not nearly 92% of people who left us last year, for example, went on to what we call a positive destination. That means they went straight into employment or on to higher or further education. And you can see some of the stats there that just show how positively our learners report back about their experience here with us, something we are re really, really proud of. So how do we do that? What does a typical day look like and what can, you, can students expect in terms of support from us when they join us? Uh, to answer a few of those questions, I'm going to hand over to Diana. Thank you, Neil. So I'm going to talk to you a bit about what to expect when your son or daughter joins college with us. So we talk a lot about the programme of study here at college because it is made up of a number of elements. 
The first element is the technical qualification that your son, daughter or young person has decided they are most interested in studying. So whether that's science, whether that's business, whether that's accounts, that will be what most of their time is spent doing. And you're looking at between 10 and 12 hours of face-to-face -face contact plus work that we expect them to complete at home as part of that technical qualification. More recently, we have in, the government have introduced funding to give students the opportunity to complete catch-up activities. There is an acknowledgement that because of the pandemic, some learners have gaps in their skills, maybe around maths and English, but also around the technical skills on some of those subjects. So post-October half term, it's highly likely that um, some learners will be asked to attend additional catch-up sessions. We would ask parents to support us, encouraging young people to access those because we know that that gives them a better, better chance of filling those skills gaps that have developed over the last two years. So in addition to um, the technical programmes, there is an expectation that for any young people who unfortunately do not achieve the grade four standard for mathematics and English in um, the summer, they will be have the opportunity to resit those with us. Um, we have a number of pathways dependent on where your son, daughter or young person's starting point is. So we may be enrolling them onto a functional skills step up qualification to provide underpinning literacy and numeracy skills. Or we may be enrolling them onto a two year GCSE program which enables them to look at skills gaps and also to give them support to step up to do their examination in year two. For some learners who perhaps are closer to getting that grade four or above, we will give them the opportunity to take the exam in year one if they can show that they are developing those skills. My message would be, whatever the results for mathematics and English are in the summer, please don't worry. We are really successful in supporting young people to resit their GCSE examinations, so your son, daughter or young person is in safe hands. In addition to English and mathematics, increasingly employers, because that's what we all talk about, we are preparing your son, daughter or young person for the world of work after college. So employers are increasingly looking for students to have had experience working in the sector in which they're interested. Some of you, if you've attended uh, open events, might have heard about the new technical qualifications being introduced called T-Levels. And we're also looking at how we can ensure that students on all programmes have access to really high quality work experience. So this can be anything between a 10 hour work experience placement right up to a really high quality industry placement of 315 hours. So that, as you can imagine, that's a large part of the programme and it really enables learners to experience what it's like to work within their sector. Another element of the programme of study is the Performance Improvement Programme, which is really our tutorial programme. So this is the opportunity for your son, daughter, a young person to be able to develop softer skills around employability, to be able to develop their understanding of the world around them, so keeping themselves safe, money management, budgeting for if they move off to university or into their own homes. So this is an opportunity also for them to monitor progress, spend time with their personal tutor and make sure that they are getting careers and progression advice whilst on their programme. What I would say before I move on is that every element of that programme of study is mandatory and they're all equally as important. So we will be chasing a young person if they don't attend maths and English in the same that way that we would if they aren't attending their technical training. So again, we would ask parents and carers to support us in ensuring that students attend all elements of that programme. Outside of the curriculum, um, we have a army of staff who are available to support young people. As Neil said, we have about 13,000 students studying with us. They are all very much individuals. So we have a range of staff who are available to work with young people, whether it's through a learning need like dys dyslexia or dyscalculia, whether it's that a young person who's having some mental health challenges, we have a counselling team to support with that, whether it's the financial side of support for college. There are a whole army of staff who are there to support your son, daughter or young person to enable them to stay on their programme and to have the best chance of achieving. 
Increasingly, we, we understand that young people are using apps and digital platforms to gain support. So we, as a college, buy into a system called Together All, which is an online peer-to-peer, 24-7 platform where young people can talk about any challenges, things that are worrying them. And this is overseen by professional counsellors, so any concerns are reported back to the college if they are of a safeguard in nature. We also have a FICA mental fitness help which helps our young people to develop resilience and that will all be um, shared with your young person at induction. As you would imagine as a college of technology we have access to a range of online systems and solutions to enable your young person to access their studies so whether it's all of the um, packages that are part of the Office 365 system to help them with their coursework or whether it's Microsoft Teams which we're using tonight for this broadcast. It enables your young person to access their learning and when they enrol with us they will have access to all of those systems through their college portal. We also have a Dudley College app, My Dudley College, which gives them an instant access to that from their mobile phone. So they'll be able to click on their My Dudley College app, it will take them to Pro Portal, which is their online learning plan. It will show them which tasks they've got outstanding, what their target grades are, it will give them access to their FICA, the mental fitness app that I um, mentioned earlier, and the Together All app as well. So again, encourage your son, daughter or young person to download that when they start college. In terms of wider support, um, obviously some young people still might be considering whether they've made the right choices and they will talk more about that or they might think about they're not sure about what to do next. We do have some fantastic independent advice and guidance officers and I can say that because they are given the matrix accreditation which tells you that an independent company have come in and given them that gold standard so you know that they are getting high quality advice and guidance when they talk to our staff within our learner services department. For young people who have decided that higher education is the next step for them, we do have UCAS advisors. Sometimes UCAS can be daunting when you're looking at what universities are expecting from personal statements and from the, 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 the robust application process for universities. We do have staff again who can support with UCAS. So again, just ask your son, daughter or young person to speak to one of our learner services team and we'll be able to arrange that for you. In terms of financial support, um, there's still financial support within college as there is within schools. So if your son and daughter was eligible for a free school meal, there's a good chance they'll be eligible for a free college meal and you'll be able to fill in bursary forms for that from the 1st of July. We also provide support with transport. So for 16 to 18 full-time learners, the first term everyone is issued with a bus pass. And then during that first term, we will be asking people to complete an assessment um, with the student finance team to look whether students are eligible for the bus pass for the remainder of their programme. Learners must maintain a minimum of 85% attendance. As much as the bus passes are nice to have to use at weekends and evenings with their friends, actually the reason we provide that with, to young people is so that they're able to get to college. So again, we would expect to, to see 85% attendance as a minimum. If it falls below that, there's a good chance that the bus pass will be removed from them. Finally, um, the student union at our college is a fantastic student union, really proactive and really vo the voice of our people. So as well as, long, as well as running our Learner Voice programme, which is where we as a management team are able to hear from our students about all the things that are going really well, but equally about things that they feel we could do better. They also run a range of clubs and activities for young people so that students get the most out of the social aspects of college life, so whether that's attending social events, trips, parties, but also more importantly they run some of our really important committees, so our disability committee and our LGBTQ plus committee to name just a couple. So I'm now going to hand you back to Neil who's going to talk about some next steps for you. Brilliant, thank you Diana. Okay, yeah, some, uh, some practicalities then just uh, for mums, dads and carers to be aware of. Um, firstly, it is a different environment here. Um, it's not a school. We don't have quite so many rules. We do try and work in a more adult environment. We're obviously trying to prepare young people for the world of work. We do ask everybody to sign up to what we call our student code of conduct. And without reading the whole thing out to you, what it really asks is that everybody treats each other how they expect to be treated. And that's very much how it works here. Um, it's a professional environment with our tutors working alongside Young people are helping them get the best in their education and move forward positively. And it does work 
really, really well here. There are a couple of asks that we have. Um, firstly, um, your son or daughter is going to get issued with a lovely ID badge during enrolment. I almost guarantee they're going to hate the photo that's on it, I'm afraid, but um, we all hate ours too. But I'm afraid they, you do need to encourage your son, daughter or young person to wear that ID badge. Um, certain buildings on our site can only be accessed through swipe card access. You won't be able to access contactless payment things, access to exams. Um, so from um, the beginning of term, everybody will be checked into the building to make sure they have got ID cards. Obviously, while people are getting used to it in the first week or two, we, we, uh, we're supportive of students. But after a while, you won't get into the building without your ID card. And that's really for everybody's safety as well. We are a town centre campus. We don't want anybody wandering into our buildings who doesn't belong there. So please do encourage your son or daughter to walk out of the door with their ID badge. We do have catering facilities, as you would expect, across all of our sites. And again, um, young people are free to move around any of our buildings to access whichever facility suits them best. And moms and dads, you'll be familiar with things like WisePay for contactless payment. I'm sure more information that will come out to you once they enrol. We do have some workwear requirements in certain departments. Some of it is linked to health and safety requirements, and some of it is obviously to help students prepare for their work placement and the industry that they're going to end up working in. You can see some examples on the screen there. Don't worry about that ahead of the start of the course. All of that will be explained once your young person is enrolled, and we'll, we'll talk more about that nearer the time. But once it has been issued, um, we would um, ask for your support in making sure that they do wear that at the times that it's required. And then lastly, I hope it goes without saying these days, actually, but we've spent an awful lot of money creating some really quite exciting learning facilities across our learning quarters. I hope you've managed to take a look, like I say, at open days. Um, so we try and keep them to the very best standard. There's no smoking or vaping on any of our campuses, including courtyards and access areas around our buildings. And obviously we do try and keep them absolutely litter free and looking the best. And I have to say our students do a great job of maintaining that. So thank you um, for any support going forward. So some really important bits for moms, dads and carers sat out there. And I'm very much sat in the same um, position as you at the moment as my daughter's nearly finishing her GCSEs and now trying to make her mind up about what course to go on to next. What do the next few weeks and bring, uh, bring after, after exams? Well, first of all, um, we've got some taster activities coming up. I'm hoping you've received some information about this, but I, I sh if not, it's not too late. During week beginning the 27th of June, we're running taster um, events for all of our subject areas across our campuses. Um, if you haven't heard about it yet, if you jump on our website, you'll see there's a link to register for taster activities. They're running across the week. And I really recommend that if, you, if uh, your young person hasn't signed up for one of those that they do, it's a great way of meeting the tutor, finding out more about the course, taking a look around the college. And in particular, if you're not sure, still trying to make your mind up between a couple of courses, perhaps try out more than one and help you make that decision. So they're coming up a week on Monday, which I hope will be of use. Well, then you'll, you'll receive a number of communications from us over the summer or your son or daughter will as we just keep um, feeding information in about what to expect from next year. But you'll see that communication ramp up a bit as we get ever closer to Results Day uh, on the 25th of August, GCSE Results Day. Um, in the lead up to that, you'll get some instructions or your son or daughter or young person will get some instructions sent to them about how to enrol at the college. Um, a lot of that is done online these days, but equally there'll be a face-to-face -face element of that where you can meet with our tutors, go through your results and make sure that we get you enrolled on the right course. Um, I know that can be a terribly nerve-wracking day for young people. I'm not looking forward to it with my daughter. I know she's already very anxious about it. Please do support them in that day and please do reassure them that there is a place at college for them. Whilst whatever course they've applied to will have entry requirements associated with it, if for some reason, and I very much hope this isn't the case, but if they haven't got the results they were expecting, please don't worry, there will be a route through. We might recommend an alternative course. We might recommend a lower level course to prepare them to then move on to their original planned course. There will be a route through. So I very much hope that when the results are opened, it's nothing but smiles and, uh, uh, and celebrations. But if there's something there you weren't expecting, please don't panic. Just bring those results along to us and we'll do our best to get you into a suitable course. 
You'll then be um, enrolled. It, uh, um, it's a relatively straightforward process. Like I say, a lot of that can be done online these days. Um, during that enrolment, you'll get issued with an ID card at some point in your timetable um, of what to expect when you start with us. And then you'll be joining college or your young person will be joining college before you know it. Enrolment happens all the time, straight from when um, results come out on the 25th of August, from midday that day, we start enrolment right through and beyond even to when we start teaching. So our first teaching day is Monday, the 5th of September. Um, it will actually start with a couple of induction days, which will be um, hopefully helpful to your young person to get them settled into college, make sure they have got things like their ID card, their bus pass, their timetable, get them logged on to some of those critical college systems that Diana spoke about before, and just get them settled into their um, course. For parents, um, there'll be lots of opportunities for you to get involved as well. Um, we do do two formal parent guardian consultation evenings. There's one of them in November and one of them in March. Um, those, um, ahead of those, you'll get sent a report on your young person's progress on their course to date. And there'll be an opportunity to respond to that by booking in for an appointment with their personal tutor if you want to discuss their progress or anything that's um, mentioned in that report in more detail. Your young person, as Diana mentioned before, will have access to a system called Pro Portal, which is their learning plan online. It lets them see their targets, their comments from their tutor, their attendance, all the rest of it. I would encourage parents to be aware of that. And remember, you can ask your young person to log on to that at any point and see how they're getting on. We will have an enhanced first half term for all of our students this year, conscious of what a difficult two years they've just been through. We want to make sure everybody settles in well into college, but also just support them to make sure they've made the right choice in their course and to do something about it if they haven't. And I'll talk a bit more about it in a moment. And then also for parents, a couple of other things that are new for this coming year. Firstly, we'll be offering some autumn and spring workshops for parents. So for example, um, if you want to know how to support your young person more through exams, um, with us or perhaps you want to know a bit more about what life after college could entail and how to support a young person in progressing after college. We'll be offering some workshops that you'll be able to register for. More details will come out about those soon. And then lastly, um, we're also hoping that this year we're going to be piloting a brand new My Dudley College app for parents. Um, as Diana mentioned, we've been using one with students for a good while now. We would like to open that up to parents so that you can see the same information they can about attendance, their progress on their course and communication with their tutor and so on. More information on that again as we begin to roll that out in a pilot phase uh, this academic year. One really important thing to finish up with and then we'll move on to our questions and answers in just a moment. Um, is, and I'm sure this will, there's going to be somewhere, at, somebody listening out there at the moment that this will happen to. What happens if your son or daughter or young person come home, comes home one day from college and goes, well, I'm, I'm really not sure I made the right choice. I wish I'd have picked that A-level instead of this one. I wish I'd have done a you know, motor vehicle instead of engineering. Um, I found a job and I wish I'd have gone for the apprenticeship route rather than full-time study, whatever it might be. Um, Please don't worry if that happens. My, my, my plea to you is to talk to us if that should happen. Um, you won't be the first, you certainly won't be the last. We definitely want all our young people to be on a course that they enjoy, that they're happy doing, and we would much rather support them to change course if that's gonna lead them to happier studies. Uh, a happy student tends to perform much better in the subject that they're studying. So if that does happen, do please talk to us. We can move people between courses and provision very easily. Um, we're very used to doing it. During those first six weeks, we will try and make sure everybody settles as quickly as we can because obviously if we do have to move you to a different course, we don't want you to have missed out on any learning in that new course. And certainly by October half term, we want everybody to be where they should be uh, in terms of their course. But if it happens, do talk to us. It's not a problem. We're very happy to help. On that note, your first port of call, if you, if you do want to talk about any concerns or questions you've got, mums and dads, please do talk to your personal tutor. Your, your, your um, young person is going to be assigned a personal tutor during induction. They're your main port of call. They will be sorting them throughout their studies and they're your main contact if you've got any questions at all. If for any reason you don't get the response you're expecting from the personal tutor, I doubt that's the case because they're a fantastic set of staff, but if you're not, 
then if you jump on the website, click on About Us, you'll see loads of information about the senior team, myself, Diana, and uh, others included. You'll see some terrible photos of us, but alongside those are our phone numbers and email addresses. Email is probably the best bet for, for reaching out to us, and we'll get back to you as quickly as we can to answer whatever questions you have. Um, that's about it from our Whistle Stop presentation there. I hope that's answered a number of your questions, but we're going to devote the rest of the time that we've got now to answering questions that have been coming in through the question and answer section on Teams, and I can see we've had a number come through already. We will do our best to get through as many as we can in the time we've got allotted to us this evening, but I'll talk a little bit at the end about how you can find out more if we don't quite get to yours. I'm going to do my best to hand off questions to member of our, members of our panel, um, and uh, I'm sure we'll all chip in as we go. The first question that's come through, um, and I'll hand this over to you, uh, Sonia, if I could. Uh, my daughter has applied to study science, but now wants to do engineering. What can she do? Okay, that's absolutely fine. If she wants to change course, she can contact admissions um, on admissions at dudleycoll.ac.uk or she can contact Learner Services. And it's important to remember, just as I said in the presentation there, folks, it's never the end of the world, even if they start the course and um, decide that it wasn't the course for them and they want to swap at that point, we can make it happen. So don't worry, I know this is a difficult decision. In fact, my daughter has changed her mind about six times in the last week, so I, I do fully appreciate it. Okay, next question. Uh, what grades do you need to do a level three course? Diana, can I hand this over to you? Yeah, so um, it may differ for different subjects, but generally we're looking at five um, GCSEs, grade four and above including mathematics and English for most programmes. But I think, as Neil said, if, unfortunately, students don't quite get that when they get the results in the summer, don't worry, just come and talk to us, bring your GCSE results in, and we will be able to find a suitable programme for yourself, your son or daughter. Absolutely, thank you. OK, next question coming through. Is the Art and Design BTEC course Level 3 available for taste a week? I think I can field this one, which is... Uh, an easy answer because the answer is yes. Uh, just be aware that when you go on the Taster uh, Week's website to register for the course, not all courses are available on every day. So do look through each of the days to try and find the course that's applicable to you. They will appear sometimes more than once through the, through the week, but certainly, yes, um, Art and Design BTEC is there uh, for Taster Week, week beginning the 27th. I believe most of the Art and Designs are actually on the Monday, but please do have a look through the week. OK, next question. Regards to the studying app, can both the student and parent have access at the same time? Well, I'll have a go at fielding this one, only because we don't have a parent app at the moment. So um, the My Dudley College app at the moment is only for students, and it's basically a portal through to all our other systems. So from there, they can go through to Microsoft Teams, they can look at their calendar, they can uh, look at their target grades, they can go on some of the uh, support services that Diana was talking about um, earlier and it is for student use so they'll get issued to that as part of induction. What we want to do is be able to access, open up access to some of that for parents through a parents version of My Dudley College app which we hope to launch later this year. Having said that, until that app is available please use Pro Portal. Remember those words Pro Portal. Um, you can encourage your son or daughter to log on to that at home. It's accessible from anywhere with an internet connection and that will allow you to see things like their attendance on their course, any comments they've had from their tutor, how they're getting on with their target grades, their reports, everything. So, and there's no issue with both of you accessing that um, at the same time. Okay, next question. When will induction be in September and what will they need to do? Um, I'll go back to you, Sonia, if you're okay for that one. Okay, um, all courses um, will have induction starting week commencing the 5th of September. Um, when your son or daughter comes to enrolment, they will be given instructions as to um, the start of their programme. OK, so we begin in the 5th of September, the critical date there. Next question, my daughter will be starting an accountancy apprenticeship and will be attending Dudley College one day per week from September. When is the enrolment and do you know which day the day release AAT courses are held? Now, this is uh, slightly different, this one. Um, in that the enrolment is done through you, your employer. So apprenticeships provision starts with the employer. Um, so um, to become an apprentice, you first have to have a job, and then it's the employer that sends you on the programme. 
So they will progress the uh, enrollment with you. Again, it happens during August, so it'll be a similar period of time, but it'll be done directly with our employer engagement team who will come out to the employer and process that enrollment um, in the workplace with you and the employer. I can't tell you what day currently the day release is for that particular programme, unless anybody else can comment. Yeah, um, it, it depends on which level um, your son or daughter is starting on, but um, level two is usually Tuesday and level three is usually a Thursday. Um, and it starts week commencing the 13th of September. Brilliant, thank you. Next question, uh, where do I order chef's uniform? Well, we can probably pick this up in terms of uniform in general. And Diana, do you want to yeah, try yeah. and pick this I'm one? I'm happy to answer this one. So um, you'll get all the information about ordering uniform uh, when your son or daughter starts induction. As we've talked about, there's a good chance that a number of students will change their mind about what programme that they're going to be on. So my advice would be there is no rush to get the uniform. I would probably wait until they've started for a couple of weeks and they are absolutely certain that this is the programme they want to do before you start purchasing uniform for those programmes because a number of students do decide to move about. There is no pressure on them to have that right at the start of the programme, but actually um, I would give it a couple of weeks and you'll get all the information, costs and suppliers that we use when your son or daughter comes to enrol with us. Okay, brilliant. Thank you, Diana. Next question I've got is, what is the difference between a BTEC and apprenticeship? I think I can probably field this one. Um, as I mentioned briefly just before with the other question on apprenticeship, the main um, difference, of course, is you're employed. So for an apprenticeship, um, what happens is you typically, um, you get the job first and then your employer sends you on apprenticeship training with the college. Most apprentices come to the college, obviously, on a part-time basis. For many of our apprenticeships, that's a day release model, as Sonia was just describing uh, with accountancy. With some apprentices it's block release but you'll be released from your employer for certain days to come and do the training at college. With a BTEC, that's a full-time programme of study with us, it's the opposite essentially. You're at college most of the time studying towards your BTEC in the way that Diana outlined earlier but you will go on work placement with employers to help you get work ready and get some work experience. The critical difference of course there is you need to have a job to be an apprentice. And many of our young people do start on apprenticeship programmes and we do have an apprentice hub based at the college that can help people find apprenticeship vacancies. So if you haven't come across that, please do pop in and visit the college. You can register your details in your CV with them and they will start to try and match make you with vac vacancies um, in the local area. Okay, next question, we want to book a holiday. I don't blame you at all. Can we do that and still enrol after the 25th of August. Diana? Yes, absolutely. So enrolment, we tried to get most of enrolment done by the 5th of September in order to have all students starting at the same time. But it's absolutely fine if you are slightly late. Um, we'll be enrolling straight up until the Saturday of that week where we have an open Saturday on that week. So absolutely no problem at all. Please don't not book a holiday because you're worried you won't be able to start college. Brilliant. And I very much hope you enjoy the holiday. Uh, next question, uh, what happens if you don't live with parents? Can you go to the parents' evening? Well, um, it's not a parents' evening per se. It's a parents' guardians' carer evening. So as if you're the, um, the, you know, the registered guardian or carer of that young person, then by all means, you can take part in those consultation uh, evenings. When um, young people enrol with us at the college, they have to declare the names of the parents and guardians um, that are registering with us here at the college. And it, was, it will be whoever they declare at that point will receive communications and invitations from us. So I hope, hope that answers that question. Uh, next question, I'll hand over to Sonia if I could. Can my son change his course when the results are released? Yes, um, your son can change his course um, up to when he receives his GCSE results, but also within the first six weeks of starting a, a course if he feels that that course isn't what he expected. Um, there are plenty of options here at Dudley College for him to, to change courses um, too. So yes, that, that's perfectly fine. And just to pick up that point as well about apprenticeships earlier, we do have some young people who start with us on an apprenticeship programme, uh, on a full-time programme, sorry, studying full-time in the way Diana described, but then are fortunate enough to gain employment partway through the, their studies 
and they flip to the apprenticeship mode of study with their employer at that point. So anything is possible really, folks. Again, just talk to your tutor uh, about that. Um, next question is, uh, will I need to buy kit and uniform for the young person I care for before they start? I think you picked this up, Diana, but just to double stress that point, if you could. Yeah, absolutely. So I wouldn't worry about buying any kit at this moment. As I said previously, um, some students will change their course. So what we wouldn't want you to do is spend lots of money on, for example, hair and beauty kits and then find out that your son or daughter or young person decides that that's not for them and they want to move over to motor vehicle as an example. So please, um, all this information will come out to your son or daughter during induction. So there is absolutely no rush. Don't panic about getting uniform. There is a grace period where we accept that learners might not have their uniform right away. OK, excellent. Uh, next question is about GCSE results. Diana, if I could stick with you on this. If I get my English GCSE and others at grade four, can I still do level three health and social care? If I do not, I think that's referring to if they don't quite get the grades they were expecting, perhaps, Diana. Okay. Um, so as I said, on a level three, we would expect usually you to have um, a grade four in mathematics and English and three other subjects. If you don't get one of maths and or English, there is a possibility to resit one. What we'd want to do is for you to bring in your GCSE results so we can see how close you were and whether there's an option of, of a um, retake. The, the full-time programmes, as you've seen, are, are quite full-time at level three, but we do have some people who do do a resit alongside it, but we deal with that on an individual basis, so you'd have to sit down and speak to the course tutor, so we'd make sure that actually we're not setting you up to fail by putting you on program that you're not quite ready for what we prefer to do is, is put you perhaps on a, on a level two but we'll deal with that on a one-to-one on -one basis so please just at enrolment bring along your GCSE results and have a chat with the tutor for your program absolutely thank you Diana just wait and see if we get another question coming through uh, yep yeah. uh, what grade is the minimum to have to reset maths and English so we did pick this up briefly in the presentation but if we can just share again please Diana so there isn't a minimum grade, so if you missed your examination, so a grade either you or if you graded a grade one, what we would look at doing is put you onto a functional skills English and mathematics programme, which would enable you to develop underpinning numeracy and literacy skills in the first instance. And then if you progressed with us the following year, you would be put onto a GCSE resit. If you get a grade two, you will be put onto a GCSE resit program that lasts for two years with no expectation of you taking an exam in the first year. Most of our students, even if they're on a one year level two program with us, are with us for more than one year. So there's no pressure of putting you in for an exam in that first year. What we try to do is use the first year to build skills and gaps that you've developed and, and give you that time to have some scaffolded support. If you've got a grade three, you would be put on a GCSE reset programme with the option to reset in year one if we felt that you were, were ready for the reset. What we don't want to do is put you under undue pressure because there is time for you to do that in the usual two years people are with us. Great, thank you, Diana. Um, I'll hand this one over to you, Sonia. It, the, the question is how long is the animal care course per week? But probably just a general question about what's a typical number of hours per week for a yeah. student studying. Yeah. Typical hours um, per week range from 10 to 12 hours on a full-time programme, um, depending on, on the level. Um, and that can be across typically three days per week um, for each learner. But it's dependent on you know, which course and level that you are on. Can I just um, come in there about animal science? Just to confirm that um, animal care is one of the programmes where there is a, a large industry placement uh, built into that program so there is an expectation that learners do a minimum of 150 hours of placement during their animal care program at level three particularly but equally at level two there is a large industry placement element to that program of study so in addition to the on-site program that um, Sonia talked about there will be a placement um, we use obviously Dudley Zoo we're in a great proximity of those we use um, the animal sanctuary at Broxwood in Sedgley for those who are local and the wild zoo at Halfpenny Green so we have a number of placements that we use but that is a program where there is quite a large element of uh, experience in the sector 
And remember the point Diana made earlier about the whole programme of study. So you, you may well be doing 12 hours of face-to-face -face delivery on your technical programme. You'll then be doing your work placement out in the workplace. You might be doing English and maths as well, three hours each on each of, of those potentially. And you will have a weekly tutorial session, what we call, as Diana mentioned before, the personal improvement programme, which is one and a half hours um, on top of that. In addition to that, there might also be the extra top-up um, options that Diana was talking to help people with some of their practical skills. So it can be quite a field week. Most people are with us four days a week, typically three to four days, uh, with some of the rest of that time around that taken up with their, their work placement. Okay, next question. Is there a date we have to choose what course we want to enrol on if we have multiple courses that we want to do? Um, so, um, yes, you do ultimately have to commit to a course at some point. So many students enrol, uh, sorry, apply to more than one course, my daughter included, um, as they're trying to make their mind up. But at some point when you come to enrol after your GCSE results are out, you will commit to the one course you're going to try and start. As I've said, and as we've stressed a number of times though, if after that you wish to change your mind, you do have a period of time to do that up until October. So um, uh, really by October, you should be on the course that you're committed to for the remainder of the programme. Okay, next question. Is there a bursary or any sort of financial support available to support me? Diana? So um, predominantly the support that you'll receive will be with travel or the free college meals we mentioned earlier. Uh, there is a separate bursary because I know we've had a question for someone who potentially um, may be looked after. So there is a separate bursary that can be applied for if you are a child who is in care um, and being looked after. But again, all of that information will be available from the 1st of July for people to apply for any financial support they require. Excellent. Uh, next question, Sonia, if I could send this your way. My daughter has already got her place on her desired course. Does she still need to come and enrol? Um, the answer is yes. Um, your daughter will still need to come in and enrol um, once she's received her GCSE results. So we, we, we can check them and collect all the data that we need um, um, for, about her. Also, she'll need to come in so she can get her timetable um, and get information about induction. Okay, and, and as I said, lots of communications will come out about that over the next few weeks ahead of um, GCSE Results Day. Okay, next question. My son wants to do Level 2 Culinary, but has not done Level 1. Is a GCSE in food acceptable instead of a Level 1? Yeah, I can pick that one up. So I think, um, again, the Level 2 Cookery will have a entry requirement that will be published on our website. Um, it's not necessary to them for, for someone to have done a level one in that program, um, but they will need the appropriate entry requirements. So again, at enrolment, bring in the GCSE results and we'll make sure that your son or daughter is put onto the right program of study for them, which gives them the, the best chance of achieving. Excellent. Um, I'll hand this one to you, Sonia. How many hours a week is the Fast Track Accounting course? OK, the Fast Track course is slightly different to our other Level 3 programmes um, because students do Level 2 and Level 3 in a year, so they do more hours. Um, they do a total of 19 hours, including their, their PIP tutorial sessions per week. So they are in significantly more than our other typical Level 3 learners. Thank you very much. Okay, just looking to see if we've got any more questions coming through. Gone a bit quiet on the chat. Let's see if there's any more. Uh, okay, one just come through. Can you start bricklaying on level two or does it have to be level one? I think it's a similar answer to the question before, Diana, yeah. but just to stress that point again. No, absolutely. So again, it is dependent on the entry requirements for each programme. We do try to embed some of the, the lower level skills into level two if the learners have the right GCSE results. Um, but again, it, it will depend on what the entry requirements um, for those programmes are. So if you look on our website, it will tell you there isn't a requirement to do level one um, on all of these courses, but there is a requirement to have the right GCSE results um, to enable you to be able to cope with the level of study assignments and examinations that are part of that course. 
Some of the courses will, of course, also do some sort of look at skills, technical skills, and you know, if, if literally that's your first ever experience of holding a brick, as it were, <laughs> then they might might recommend a, a, a preparatory course before you move on to the level two. But um, all of that can be picked up during the enrolment when he's put taught to the course tutor. Next question, um, how much coursework at home is required? I'll have a go at this one. Um, it does vary from course to course. There is absolutely an expectation of, uh, of home working for every single one of our courses. So as well as the face-to-face -face delivery sessions that we've mentioned, there are online resources as well every week, both for the um, personal tutor program, but also for the main program of study. And your tutor will set assignment and homework activities weekly as well. Um, Typically, how much would that look like a week? Well, for people to get the very best result out of their program, we recommend that they put as much time in outside of college as they do inside of college. So if you're doing 12 hours of face-to-face -face lectures here in the college, you might expect to commit 12 hours of your time outside of college to make sure you're keeping on top of assignments and coursework and so on. OK, I think we're coming to the end of our set of questions there, so I can't see any more now. Can I just say a big thank you to everybody who has posted a question, because hopefully your question has been uh, helpful to other people as well. Um, I'm just going to talk a bit more then um, before we finish about how to find out more if we haven't managed to get to you, or indeed if the minute we end this presentation as another question pops into mind. Um, firstly, you can contact contact us directly with questions. If you um, uh, contact our learner services email address, which you can see straight on our website, um, they, those questions will then be routed through to the relevant tutor so we can get a response to you. Today's um, Q&A and the presentation you've seen today has been recorded. So if it feels like there's been a lot of information coming at you and you want to have another look at that later, or if you want to share that with anybody who wasn't able to make the session today, it will be available on our website within a couple of days after um, this presentation. And just to stress, the website is packed full of other information as well. Remember, you can go on there to register for the taster sessions, look at all the course information, and you can also access our full parent and carer guide on the website, which covers a lot of the things we've, we've talked about today in a little bit more detail. Beyond that, can I say again, a massive thank you to everybody who's joined us this evening, especially as it's a lovely sunny day. I do hope you enjoy the, the rest of the day. For any young people who happen to be sat there with mums, dads and carers, um, very well done to you. You're the first young people to make it through uh, the exam period, or you very nearly made it through, not long to go now. Uh, first people to do that in three years, which is quite an achievement. Well done to all of you uh, on your exams. I wish you all the very best in your results, whatever they will, may be. And I hope to see many of you here with us in September. Thanks ever so much for joining us, joining us on behalf of me and the rest of the panel here. Have a very pleasant evening. Thank you. <laughs>